from us. Good seeing you. Good to see you again. So, can you tell us a little bit where do you think AI will go? Do you have a crystal ball? I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, I, I think that AI is going to change patients' lives at scales. First, it's going to help big pharma, and you'll tell us more about that, uh, trying to be able to develop drugs uh, in a more efficient way, faster, with more precision. Uh, and, and having less of a, what we call uh, intuition-driven approaches. A lot of development of drugs is based on people intuition. So drugs will be developed um, uh, faster and in a, in a better way for more patients, I guess. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's really something that is going to be a, a, a breakthrough for, for everyone in the field. What do you think yourself? You think, what do you think AI is changing the way drugs are being developed? Yeah, number one, I think we have to be humble uh, in terms of the progress we expect. AI yeah, is fantastic at recognizing patterns, uh, at distinguishing signals in very complex data sets, but ultimately we always will still need human intelligence, AGI, and we will need experimental validation. I think it's also very important that we have the right use cases, uh, you know, how we interact and come up with the right use cases, absolutely important. Uh, and in terms of exciting areas, there are three of them. One is potentially changing the productivity of the industry. It's all about cycle times in our industry and AI has really the potential to accelerate how we get drugs into the clinic and to patients. Um, and then there are other areas like uh, the quality of molecules. Imagine currently we're doing screening of a few hundred thousand molecules to get to a medicine. Imagine you with AI you can navigate a chemical space of billions of molecules and, and find a better quality set of molecules. And then ultimately the real impact of AI could be on patients with precision medicine approaches and really helping us tailoring specific medicines to patient populations. Can you explain a bit more what yeah. federated machine learning means? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, the idea of federated learning is today uh, data are produced in hospitals from patients. And today they reside within the infrastructure within the hospital, but they're being broked. Uh, they mean just sold to other players. They're getting out of the hospitals. And whenever a data comes from a hospital to a cloud or something more central, you have a risk of being breached. And so there is a security risk. Uh, the second point of having the problem of data is like, uh, because you sometimes don't know who it belongs to, it should never leave where it's produced, which is the hospital. So the idea of federated learning means data should never leave where they're being produced, which is in the hospitals. It's the algorithms that come to the hospital, A, for example, being trained there. It's coming back centrally, and the algorithm is being sent to another hospital, and another hospital, and it can train with multiple hospitals in a decentralized way, but data stays within the firewall, uh, uh, and it's in a completely privacy-preserving mode. And what's really important is, in research, people have so much silos, they don't want to work together. There is, you know, there is so much competition between players. They say, hey, I want to be first to publish. Uh, you know, I, and they don't want to collaborate. And if you ask people to aggregate data to make better research, they might refuse. So the idea of federated learning is also to break these research silos, these competitive silos, and being able to create a collective intelligence without having to take the data from the hospitals that have been produced. But let me ask you about another topic, which is, the impact of AI on patients, precision medicine. Yeah. Is, is it the golden era of precision medicine now with AI coming to the party? I think that today precision medicine, really, you know, as you know better than me, being a, a brilliant immunologist, is really that uh, patients being treated differently from each other. Today it's very hard to, to understand that so many patients have the same treatment when they have a different cancer, when they have a different biology. So you would really try to imagine a way where everybody's treating regarding his own tumor and his own uh, whole, whole genotype and everything. And so the idea of being this precision medicine to everyone, being treated differently, uh, AI will bring a lot of power and augmentation. And how? It's just being a, a new way to develop drugs. Uh, and at Okin we build that precision medicine has to come from day one. You find a new target, you match it to the right subgroup. Then you use a subgroup to develop your drug, do the right clinical trials. And then you need to be able to deploy the drugs as a diagnostic tools uh, uh, for patients in the real world setting. And so for me, precision medicine and AI will help understanding these subgroups, uh, subgroups of patients that have a differential biology and response to treatments, and using these subgroups toward the full value chain of the drug, the full life cycle of the drug, and at the end bringing by design this precision medicine. And trying to, to today, like finding these subgroups without AI is pretty hard because the right way to describe a subgroup, to find the real complex, the, the, to write, to absorb the complexity of the biology of a subgroup, will need analysis of images, which is something only AI can bring. And we can only discover markers, certain markers, by 
computer vision to analyze, for example, a biopsy image, something like a classical pathologist or bioinformatician wouldn't be able to do. Absolutely, and uh, we at Sanofi certainly have a patient-first mindset. If I put myself into the shoe of a patient, what do I want? I want to have an effective drug, I want to have a safe drug, I want to have a drug which I can afford, which is affordable, and I want to have ideally a medicine which is tailored to my personal needs. And all of those four domains are going to be impacted by AI. For example, by getting better quality molecules, we're going to improve the efficacy and the safety. Uh, by changing the cycle time, we're improving productivity of the industry and that will help ultimately uh, to reduce the cost of potentially dr uh, drugs. And then if you think about the other opportunities we have on precision medicine to specifically tailor medicines to individual patients, that would be the ultimate holy grail. We also work a lot at Okin on what we call causal AI, which is really trying to understand how we can go from a gene to a cell, to a cell to a tissue and a tissue to a disease, trying to understand this multi-scale uh, prediction, we call it multi-scale AI understanding, uh, with more causality, what's the cause of the disease? Because today, uh, um, we don't know the cause, everything is a correlation and it's not powerful enough to, to make breakthrough in medicine. You know, we, we're impressed by the understanding of Sanofi about how AI will impact the full value chain. It's what we do at Okin, you know, drug discovery, drug development and diagnosis, and being able to understand the cross-fertilization between everything. So we're so happy to bring value to this full journey of the life cycle with you guys. Thank you. So Thomas, I really enjoyed this conversation. It expands on our already existing fantastic collaboration. It's a meeting of minds, and I know the teams reflect what we just discussed. Uh, an incredible journey and much more to come in AI and biotech and beyond uh, and looking forward to be on this journey together with you. Thank you, Frank.